We got to the gates of the secret place in Lakewood, Washington at 4 p.m. I entered the court and we slowly passed through the opened gates. The road made a steady turn and the host Thornwood Castle raised before us in all its antique beauty. It was very quiet around and we both lowered our voices descended to the whisper. We opened the heavy castle's entrance door and it greeted us with loud creak. There was no one inside, the keys lonely laid on the table. We kept staying in the doorway, waiting for somebody and scrutinizing the luxurious decor of the great hall. On the right, the huge Christmas tree occupied a lot of hall's room and tree lights softly glared down. On the other side, there was a grand piano and kids' locomotive toy underneath it, and central staircase to the upper floors was decorated with Christmas ornaments that sparkle in the delicate shade of the hall. Our mystery idol was interrupted by a young lady who came inside from the ordinary side door. After completing formalities, the whole castle was at our command. Winter nights dropped the curtain of darkness early, so we left the luggage luggage at our Casablanca site on the third floor and hastened outside to take a stroll around the castle before it faded into obscurity. Not only twilight, but November chill forced us back into warmth and kindness of the lodging. The old door invited us inside the castle with the familiar shrill squeak. The rooms of the second floor are very different from the attic rooms of the third one. We assumed that the third floor was more likely servants' living area, when the rooms of the second floor were occupied by the owners some days. Every room is unique and keeps its own secrets and spirits. Silently and slowly, we tiptoed from one room to the other, being afraid to frighten away the invisible inhabitants, like Master Chester Thorne's spirit in his bedroom, or his wife's phantom at Anna's side, or encounter with amorphous occupants President Theodore Roosevelt or President William Howard Taft in the presidential side that used to be the owner's private bedroom, or one of the Thorns guests who stayed at the Blue Room. We met two young women silently wandering around the castle which seemed like ghosts to us, floating here and there, and then disappearing, and we haven't seen them anymore. Maybe we came across as ghosts to them as well? With two other senior-looking ghosts, we would have breakfast tomorrow morning, but tonight the romantic dinner was served in our luxury Casablanca site at small attic kitchen. On the third floor is the sewing room. All the needed sewing was done for the owners and staff. The servants' wing was converted into Lord Byron's site. Rose Red Room became famous after Stephen King's creepy movies. Breakfast was served at the gorgeous ballroom, along with a pair of other guests the ghost of our own daughter and her friend deemed to condescend to our company and join the morning feast, whose twilight silhouettes melted in the thin morning air instantly after the breakfast. In the secret garden that skillfully hidden from worldly vanity, I completely lost the sense of time and space turning into amorphous fraction of Thornwood's floating spirits. 
serenity and peacefulness of the castle took us far away from the reality of life, dissolving all troubles in the mysterious atmosphere of silence, odd quietness and tranquility. When we crossed the gate line, the clocks started ticking again, and even faster. The hysterical noise of the freeway brought us to our senses. The next castle we wanted to visit was an existence of 30 minutes, located in Olympia, the capital of Washington state, and the name of the castle is Capitol.